recapping yesterday while looking ahead to today's sports day. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. <clears throat> Good morning with Choice Woodman and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Choice is in for Jamie. He'll be back on uh, Monday morning. Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Mm. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm already tired of uh, getting up this early. Not tired of you, Chuck. Just mm. two days is plenty. Yeah. Two days is plenty. <laughs> it is. <laughs> wow. I, don't, I what, couldn't go to sleep till after midnight last what, night, so we get you, that a lot. Choice. What do you say? <clears throat> what do you say to uh, to like Jamie and uh, Jeff with me? Do you, do you think that's two days is an awful lot? I would say based off of uh, Jamie's. How do I dance around this? He is my boss. Jamie's perceived grouchiness at times. Oh, you think uh, that? The, you I'd think say that, he, two days is plenty in a week you think for that him. Jeff, too. Jeff and I are the cause for that. Is what no, you're saying? No, I think it's getting up early. <laughs> getting up early. It's, it's that yeah. part of it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> there's, there's no doubt. <clears throat> there's no doubt. Um. All right, so I, I have a, a question for you. Okay. And um, I'm just, I'm just. I'm befuddled by it. All right, what uh, what was your reaction to the NBA um, announcing yesterday that they were going to permanently retire Bill Russell's uh, number six? Um, I was fine with it. I don't know. I I guess he is an activist, but. Uh, I kind of like to see the... To me, he was a pioneer. Sure, sure. But do you think of him in the same vein as you do Jackie Robinson? Well, we should. And that's the problem. We should. Okay. We, we should. Well, I, I don't, and I'm a younger guy, obviously. Um, but here's the problem. I don't remember Bill Russell playing, okay? Okay. So, so and, and I... The only Bill Russell that I remember coaching was the Bill Russell that was that failed with Seattle and and with Sacramento, okay, because he couldn't recreate the magic that he had with with the Boston Celtics. Yeah. The question that I have is, okay, Bill Russell hasn't played in a kajillion years. Uh-huh. What? Why, why? Why are we doing this after he died? That's a good point. I mean, you know, I mean, why? If you wanted to honor the man. Honor him. And now, Bill Russell may have been a guy, would not have surprised me if, just based on, on how um, non-public he was in terms of basically self-gratification, okay? Mm-hmm. And he's a guy that certainly had plenty of skins on the wall when you, when you look at 11 times, 11 times won an NBA championship, okay? 11 to, what, 13-year span, right? Five times NBA Most Valuable Player. Mm-hmm. 12 times NBA All-Star, okay? Four times the rebounding champion. I, I guess I don't even know why he, Bill Russell's not looked at with those kind of numbers. I get it, we're talking different eras, but he's not even looked at as when, when we have these all-time great conversations. Mm-hmm. Doesn't feel like his name even gets mentioned in the top five very often and sometimes gets left out of the top ten, depending who you're talking to. Right. I mean, and I think that is just a... And it's been 50 years since he's played, so mm-hmm. that that obviously has an effect on it. But, yeah. Um, Bill Russell's one of those guys that gets overlooked that probably probably shouldn't. But, obviously, the league is is trying to uh, say it it shouldn't be that way. I mean, by, he by is... retiring he, his number. He, he is, without question, the NBA's version of Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson's number 42... It it was it was long after his death, and and Jackie Robinson was did, did not live to be an old man by any stretch of the imagination. He was extremely young when he died, um, but obviously he was the first uh, black baseball player, right? Uh, but and Bill Russell was basically the first black NBA superstar uh, in a in a time period of the '60s, which was not uh, very welcoming. Okay, it was not a welcoming yeah. time. Yeah. And um, and he he you know played on two NCAA championship teams uh, with the San Francisco Dons. They haven't mm-hmm. even they haven't even touched it. They haven't even touched getting to um, 
a championship vaguely uh, since then and was one of the NBA's uh, top 50 players and uh, was also on the uh, 75th anniversary team in 19 in 2021. I, I just and 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 basically, I mean, he was a he was a black head coach well before sure. anybody in Major League Baseball. You know, Frank Robinson gets that distinction, followed by Larry Doby, who ironically was also the second black baseball player and the first in the American League. Um, I just don't understand why this wasn't done 10, 15, 20 years ago by the NBA when when they when they could have, especially after ja- especially after Major League Baseball did that with Jackie Robinson. You know, the NBA could yeah. have followed suit pretty quickly and said, hey, you know what? Our Jackie Robinson is this guy over here, Bill Russell. Um, and I think Bill Russell sometimes from a um, public perception standpoint is somewhat misunderstood because – he wasn't a gregarious, outgoing um, person. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe sometimes did come off maybe different than what he should have. So I guess the answer is that, that, that the NBA did not do a good job of of marketing him as the NBA's Jackie Robinson. Because I'll sit there and talk to my kids about who Jackie Robinson was, mm-hmm. but it's not a – it's not – essential to talk to him about who who Bill Russell was and yeah. that's just because of how it's been the stories have been told over the years to me um yeah. so i don't know that's that's uh, interesting so uh then no didn't your boy lebron wear number 6 right now do you have to hang that up <laughs> or is he not get my to, boy it's not your boy no it's not my boy but you you and him were well, pals. They, they may who knows they may you know grandfather some of those in like that's they did with, guess. With, with mariano rivera yeah that's right he guess. was the last to wear 42 uh tommy heinsen said this back in 2000 tommy heinsen was a was a great player for the celtics he coached the celtics and then um later on he was a broadcaster and i i love tommy heinsen i mean he was he 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 was a guy that wasn't afraid to say anything, basically. You know, but he, he Tommy Heinsohn said this about Bill Russell and his quote uneasy relationship with Boston, saying, mm-hmm. "Look, all I know is the guy came to Boston, won eleven championships in thirteen years, and they named a bleeping tunnel after Ted Williams." <laughs> that that still shouldn't take away from Ted Williams. It should be more about... How many World Series did Ted Bill Williams Russell. win in for the Red Sox? Zero. How many? How many? Zero. Okay. But he's also one of the top five baseball players of all time. Okay. I, I, think, you could probably, you, I think you could probably say that about um, Bill Russell. Was certainly, certainly, was certainly in that deal. Yeah, I'm not Pretty saying don't take away from t- Ted Williams. This, I, I am not by any... By, I'm, I'm saying am, that him. He I am not by any stretch of the imagination um, saying that he's undeserving my question is why are we why are we why are they announcing this just you know a week or so after his death so as when opposed- did when was jackie robinson's was number at- put in because now that you say that it sounds like if mariano mariano got to wear it i think that would have been pretty close to post-death for jackie so I think oh no the MLB no no did it oh no 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 Jack, jackie's Jack- been dead for a long time right yeah jack jackie robinson died in 1972 Okay, so but it they is didn't, after his death. Yeah, though. but they right, but right, but I mean, he was he was only he was only fifty three when he died. Okay, but but the point is, it's still posthumously. I mean, it's still, posthumously yes, but I mean, they they, they didn't retire his number and for. So they didn't retire his number until two thousand and four. So then your your point is the NBA is more proactive than Major League Baseball because they well, MLB was thirty years late on it. Bill Russell. My point the, is, is right that once they did it, once once because that was considered that was considered just you know kind of came out of left field. Uh, excuse me, in nineteen ninety seven, nineteen ninety seven. They retired his number. Okay. So it was still a significant time after he died. No, no doubt. Um, my, my, I guess my point is, is that okay? So from 1997 to where we are today, that's what 25 years. Yeah. So the the NBA had a long time to think about it, right? Sure, they did. And they certainly could have. Well, we forget they, these people until they die. They could have followed suit, right? Russell may not have wanted it while he was alive. He may not have, but then, okay, so then if he didn't want it... If he, he would then, be okay with it after he passed. 
Like that could have been a stipulation. Could have been. No, there's no doubt that that could have been. It's just, I wish they would have done it while he was still alive, if they were going to do it. Getting you up and getting your sports day started. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Here with this day in sports history is Mr. Jeff McGuire. Okay, so 1948. Oh, wow. Okay, no 1908 or 1822, 1948. 1948. <laughs> Cleveland Indians get 29 hits in a nine-inning game. Did they win or lose? They won. Okay. 29 hits. Wow. It's a lot. That'll help the team batting mm-hmm. average. 1950, the first international game by an NFL team took place. The New York football giants beat the CFL's Ottawa Rough Riders mm. 20 to 6 at Ottawa's Lansdowne Stadium. Okay. 1963, Stan Musial announces he will retire at the end of the year. Mm. A year later, Mickey Mantle switch hits home runs for a record 10th and final time in the same game. Wow, that was his last time to do that. Goodness. Well, it's a feat to do it once. No no doubt, but I mean, he would play another five or six years. How about another five years? 1970, Kurt Flood loses his $41 million antitrust suit against baseball. But boy, does uh, Major League Baseball players they continue to owe Kurt Flood and Andy Messersmith. 1974, got a couple of things for you. Mm-hmm. Nolan Ryan struck out 19 and walks only two mm. as the Angels top the Red Sox 4-2. to two. And Mickey Mantle and Whitey Ford become the first set of teammates inducted into the Hall of Fame on the same day. 1986, Don Baylor gets hit by a pitch for a record 25th time in a single season. I don't know if you've ever seen like video of Don Baylor batting he leaned into pitches I mean I I believe you he leaned and then he would also lean into balls on the base path try to get hit yeah you know it's a strategy strategy. sometimes it can work (laughs) and pay attention to what the words that are coming out of my mouth are on this because you can get lost Red Sox pitcher Tim Lawler gets a pinch hit single that is an American League pitcher coming in as a pitch hitter, getting a single in 1986. How about that? And in 2019, Baltimore Orioles concede seven home runs in a doubleheader defeat against the New York Yankees to break the American to break the American League single season home runs allowed record with 248. There what would mean, be many cons- more games to go, so the number goes up from there. We mean conceded. They like just say, okay, <laughs> like, you guys have you, another one. You guys, you, we're not going to throw the way any the pitches. pitching staff was. Yeah, it was have another one. We're, what year was that? 2019. Just go ahead and circle the bases. That's basically what they did. Yes, if you watch that pitching 2019. staff. 2019. 248 home runs allowed on the season at this point breaks the MLB record. Yeah, and there's like <laughs> another month and a half, a month of, the and a half left. of the season left. Wow. That's pretty bad. It is National Julienne Fries Day. What is that? That's the really thin uh, French fries. No, I'm out. I'm in. I'm a fan of the fried potato in almost any way you can bring it to me. Okay. Uh, we're going to skip today's birthdays for just a second because tomorrow, quite possibly one of the greatest beards in Texas Tech baseball history. Greatest beard? Beard. Dallas Braden turns 39 tomorrow. Okay. He didn't have that beard when he was here. He would right? no, okay. but he is a red raider. I was thinking and has of guys that had beard. a beard while they were here. I was, here. I that's was where, too. That's where my brain went. But yeah. and on Sunday, Texas Tech offensive coordinator Zach Kitley will turn thirty-one. Okay, thirty-one. <laughs> Today. Okay, now these these are the moments where I officially start feel to old. feel old. Yeah, like I'm older than. The offensive Zach coordinator. Kitley. Yeah, you're you're older it's than like, the offensive coordinator. We, we, that I think the first realization moment, at least sports wise for me, when I felt old, was going to a to a Rangers game in my late twenties, and mm-hmm. it's like this guy's twenty one up there at the plate. Yeah. I mean, these guys are way younger than me. That are the guys I always used to look up to. The first Tech football coach that was 
younger than me was Mike Leach, only by a matter of months. Mm. We were born in the same year, but it was a matter of months. Made me feel old. Today, happy birthday to Sir Mix-a-Lot, who turns 59. Okay. Mm. And Maggie Lawson is 42. (laughs) And on this day in 1990, fossil hunter Susan Hendrickson discovers three huge bones joining... uh, jutting out of a cliff near Faith, South Dakota. They turn out to be part of the largest ever Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton ever discovered, a 65-million-year-old specimen dubbed Sue after its discoverer. Sue's skeleton went on display at the Field Museum in May of 2000. The tremendous T-Rex skeleton, 13 feet high at the hips and 42 feet, 42 feet long from head to toe, with a 2,000-pound skull with 58 teeth, is displayed in a special exhibition place. Wasn't there a big lawsuit and big... Huge lawsuit, yeah. but I didn't want to do with all the yeah. the nitty-gritty of who yeah. actually owned it and right. how, it, how it came to be. There was a lot of controversy what, over that. This is off-topic somewhat. Whatever happened to uh, the mammoth bones they discovered while excavating for the, the new loop out there towards Wolferth? Uh, I don't know, but it wasn't... This day in sports history. Oh, okay, sorry. No, no, you're good. I, it, you are asking a solid question, but I just it was like not, I remember that happened that they they came across some like mammoth bones and then mm-hmm. had to stop for a little bit. I, just, I, I will just never heard anything else on that story. Effort that information. I don't know. Those chicken bones that they find from time to time just stop progress. Chicken bones. Let's see here. Uh, you're very. I this, mean, you're pro space. You anti dinosaur. <sighs> I'm anti when people are trying to build stuff and they find chicken bones and then it's like this stop the world so we can analyze the dirt. Uh, this from Washed Up Guy, senior advisor to the Morning Drive. Our 40th anniversary was last month. On Monday, my wife and I will leave for Hawaii. It'll be the 50th state that she and I have been to. If we, we haven't been somewhere, we want to go there. That from Washed Up Guy. That's, that's solid advice mm. from Washed Up Guy. Yeah. He's... Uh, by the way, the senior advisor title is one that I gave him. He did not seek. <laughs> is he okay with it? I think so. Okay, I think so. He didn't do a. Uh, he didn't do a Lyndon Johnson. I shall not seek, nor will I accept the nomination to be your president. No, he didn't. Uh, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. It's uh, six fifty-two this morning here on the morning drive. Take your thoughts and comments in the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double t 973com or the mobile app. Uh, Benchmark Hotline is open as well at uh, 806-771-0973. I met a guy the other day uh, when I was working out who's a Morning Drive listener. And um, he said this to me. Hey, radio man. <laughs> and uh, Radio man. We, 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 we talked a little bit and, and uh, he, he said he said this to me. So this is, I think, sage advice. If you've met somebody before and they tell you that well, I've already met you kind of thing or you feel like that you might have met them. He said to me, he goes, nice to meet you or good to see you again. Lived here so long. It's one or the other. I thought that was great. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Nice to meet you. Or good to see you again. I've lived here so long. It's one or it's the one other. Or the other. Right. right. It's one or the other. I met another morning drive listener somewhat last night. I was getting the lucky lady and I a treat. Like you somewhat met them or they're somewhat of a listener? Well, I met them. He huh. he he pointed out that he was a listener. I happened to be wearing a double T97 three shirt. And then I said, he said he used to listen on his way to football practice. Oh. He used to listen. And then I said, well, what, why, why aren't you listening anymore? And he's like, well, I don't. I don't have a radio in my car. I'm like, what? I know. I was. I did. I did. I stopped right there. I just. I didn't. Like, does he I, have a beater that the radio uh-huh. went out on? Or that'd be my guess. Okay, I was about to say. Are they making cars without radios nowadays? No, that would be my. That'd be my guess. Uh, radio quick, three six. Semi quick Google search. Doesn't look like there have been any updates on the mammoth found mm-hmm. in Lubbock. Okay. Since it was found. Since it was found. Okay. So basically, they're like, uh, hey, we, we don't want to stop progress, so we're just going to let the everybody highway. forget about yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, Raider 316 says this, conspiracy theory, T-Rex was actually a dragon. Look it up. Uh, this, hey, Waco, you're younger than T-Rex Sue, even though you don't believe in dinos. Mm, I believe in dinos. I just don't believe they 
around 65 million years ago. I think it was more recent. One says this. Let's get like some what, buttermilk. Like 65, 70 years ago? Choice? I don't know. You got a timeline here? Uh, Juan says this. Let's no. get some buttermilk biscuits for Sir Mix-a-Lot this morning. Okay. Okay. Do you get the reference? No. <laughs> Honestly, no. Baby got back. Baby got back. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, you know, I'm. I've worked at a radio station almost forty years. I'm terrible with lyrics. I'm absolutely <laughs> terrible with lyrics. I heard you sing along to songs, Chuck. And <laughs> song and title. I. I'm just I'm awful, awful with that. <laughs> Yesterday, while looking ahead to today's sports day, this is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Nice to have you with us this morning on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Choice Woodman, who's in for Jamie Lint. I'm Chuck Hines. It's our pleasure to uh, welcome you today and uh, have you be a part of our extravaganza. We're here until nine o'clock this morning and then it's the end of the bench. Uh, bottom line today at high noon tech talk this afternoon on uh, lubbock sports station double t 97.3 all right uh laird asked this question on the yates flooring center chat line through the double t 97.3 mobile app presented by happy state bank any insight on the marlene stallings uh, settlement she of course the former lady raider basketball coach she reached a settlement agreement with texas tech and athletics director kirby hocutt earlier this week uh, she had a civil case against Texas Tech, basically saying uh, discrimination, fraud, defamation, breach of contract, blah, blah, blah. Um, the claim was dismissed with prejudice, uh, so it can't be filed again. So basically, they're basically they're done. OK, um, there were there were only um, basically two things left in her lawsuit uh, against Texas Tech. One was a retaliation under Title IX, and one was discrimination, okay? So everything else had been thrown out. Now, Marlene Stallings, on her Twitter account the other day, this would have been on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night, uh, today, Equality Wins settled, brought this case to clear my name, set the record straight, and contribute to principles of fa equality and fair treatment. Thrilled, worth the fight, grateful to so many including essays, I'm, I'm going to say that student assistants, I don't know, parents and Texas Tech fans, eager to return to my life's work. <sighs> okay, so Laird's asking for my insight on this. Um, obviously, I was around. I was around the program. Um, mm -hmm. I was around them extensively um, her last year. I will say this. The last time I saw Marlene Stallings was on a bus uh, the day the world shut down getting off the bus and um, walking onto the plane that took us all home uh, to, from Kansas City. And that's the last time I saw her. That's the last time I spoke to her. Okay. So that's uh, March of uh, 2020. Okay. So my, my, my insight on this is, is I went to a lot of practices because one of her claims was that she wasn't allowed. She says that she was fired because she couldn't coach as hard as the men are coached that that was one of the things that she said in her deal Did they coach him hard. Yeah. But there, I think there was, I think there were a lot of other things that led to this um, things that I did not witness uh, things that took place behind the scenes. And here's what you need to know is that, that uh, Mark Finkner and I who do these games and travel with these travel with the team. Um, we were not allowed to team dinners. We were not allowed to film sessions. Um, on the road. And so you would say, well, how, okay, so what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is um, my, the first coach that I served under, Christy Curry, wherever the team went, I went. We went, uh, Steve Strand and I went to every film session that they had on the road. We went to, we had team meals with them, wherever, again, wherever they went, we went. Candy Whitaker, I didn't travel with that group as much, but I will say this for Coach Whitaker, wherever the team went, we went. Uh, we were invited to team meals. We were invited to the team uh, scout session, either the night before or the morning of a game. And uh, no questions asked, blah, blah, blah. Okay. With Coach Stallings, we were considered visitors. 
We were considered guests, excuse me, guests. There would be times on the bus where we would pull up to the hotel. The director of operations would say dinner is at 545 or whatever. Our guests are on their own. Okay. And there would be times on that bus, it would be just Mark and I, and we were the guests. So we did not attend any film sessions with Coach Stallings and her staff. We did not attend any team dinners, lunches, breakfasts. We were not invited. We were clearly on our own. Okay. With Coach Gerlich, it's like with Coach Curry and with Coach Whitaker, wherever the team goes, we go. We are considered uh, an extension of the team. We are welcome welcome to be inside the inside the group uh we're we're part of the part we're part of the we're part of the part of the group okay so could things have happened uh at those team dinners and those film sessions absolutely i mean uh the some of the girls that that came out and and talked about uh what they suffered under uh coach stallings i believe them Mm -hmm. and uh i have no reason to doubt um some of these players and the things that were said and the things that were done. And so I'll just leave it at that. I, I hate that Texas tech had to be in a position to settle. Um, but I understand it. And sometimes you have to do that just to move forward and you can put this to bed. So from my standpoint, uh, it sounds to me exactly what, what is in the tweet that Marlene Stallings wants to coach again. Will she get an opportunity to coach again? I, I don't know. I was really disappointed to see uh, Don Staley, and I don't know her, uh, the head coach at South Carolina, basically congratulate Coach Stallings on her, quote, win. Uh, Nikki Dawkins, who was with Coach Stallings and who was fired the next day after Coach Stallings, uh, she, <laughs> she also was in support of Coach Stallings, which I, I, mm. that doesn't surprise me at all because uh, the, those two have been together at, at other stops in – Coach Stallings, I think at one point in time, was an assistant for Coach Dawkins, and she had her own challenges. And look, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, they were just mean-spirited, okay? I mean, I think there's a way to coach and a way to coach hard. And um, I think sometimes that uh, you, you've got you've to rip their heart out and be able to put it back in. And I don't think they had the ability to put back in, okay? Yeah. And, you know... Uh, I don't think the players were soft. Um, I think things could have been handled much better. Um, and as far as you know, what the women get versus what the men get, hey, my first year traveling with the Lady Raiders, they traveled on a better plane than the men. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> I remember leaving leaving uh, at the same time as the men one time. And their plane looked like the Cleveland Indians plane in <laughs> Major League, <laughs> and our and our plane looked much nicer. Now. The men now, because of their success, fly on a much larger plane because they take people with – they have a much larger group. Right. But I got to tell you, the places that we've stayed, the places that I stayed with, with uh, Coach Stallings and her group and with – whether it was Coach Whitaker or Coach um, Curry or Coach Gerlich, we stay in really nice places, okay? And there is – we're never lacking for food. You're never lacking for a variety of food. Uh, you're you those in my mind. Okay, this is just me. What I have observed. Okay, and I've not been around other programs. I've just been around this one, um, and I've not traveled with the men. I've not traveled with the football team. I will just say this: they want for nothing. Okay, uh, the GAs, the coaches. There's plenty of drinks. There's plenty of food. There's plenty of snacks. Uh, the the pillows are soft. Everybody's got their own bed. You know, the hotels are not flea bitten. I mean, they're extremely nice. I mean, we stayed in a hotel in Kansas City um, with Coach Stallings' group and and uh, Coach I think uh, and then Coach Gerlich's group, and the, the nicest places in town. So this business of we didn't get what the others got, I cry BS on that. And with regard to support from the Athletics director, he, uh, he, he was quoted as saying at one point in time in this USA Today article, it was, it was painful to watch. Well, hell yeah, it was painful to watch because we were getting killed. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I think that quote was taken out of context, you know. I think that quote was taken out of context. But, yeah, it's been, it's been challenging. You know, where, this, 
Now, in Coach Stallings, on her one, the one little defense that I'll have for her, uh, did she do nice things, some nice things for people? Yes, she did. She wasn't a t- terribly evil person all the time. Um, you know, for instance, if we won on the road, um, we would stop and get ice cream before we got on the plane. Okay? Hadn't done that with any of the other coaches. It was just a nice treat. It was something that the first time that we had won, the first time we won on the road was in Nevada. And we hadn't won on the road in like nine years or eight years. Yeah. And she wanted to stop and get a treat. So we stopped and got a treat there. We stopped and got a treat in Norman when we won there, in Lawrence when we won there, and in Ames when we won there. So, but at the end of the day, she got what she deserved. That's just my opinion. Okay. I think a from lot of what, people share that opinion. From what I observed. So that's my that's my take on everything. 725 this morning. But I, I got to tell you this. Coach Gurley has been awesome. Coach Whitaker was great. And Coach Curry was just awesome as well uh, to me personally. And Coach Stallings treated me well. But how she treated the others, I, I can't defend that. And I won't defend that. Getting you up and getting your sports day started. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Question of the day. You got it? I got it. Okay. Are you ready for it? Absolutely. Okay. I was, trying to, I was bouncing back and forth between a couple of different ones, but uh, we'll go this route. Which wide receiver? This is this is because I just saw a video of uh, one of the wide receivers tech posted. Mm-hmm. Um, which wide receiver not named Miles Price? <laughs> you okay. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yes, sir. <laughs> What was so funny about no, that? No, I was just, I was probably going to say Miles Price. Okay, which, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> which wide receiver not named Miles Price mm-hmm. will have the most yards for the Red Raiders in 2022? <sighs> okay. Also, Jeff? you may pick a tight end if you would like. Okay. Pass okay. catcher we'll go with. Okay. Which pass catcher will have the most yards? For Texas Tech in 2022, and you can't pick Miles Price. You can't pick Miles Price. So I think he's the low-hanging fruit on this one. <sighs> Boy, Baylor Cup looks awful good. Jeff? I'm debating between two. Debating between J.J. Sparkman and Xavier White. Those are the two that I'm sitting <laughs> here going, you've seen some flashes from them in the past couple of seasons. Mm-hmm. You expect that uh, Price is going to be getting a lot of attention from the other team. I'll go white. See, if I were to, I think if I were to pick between those two, I would pick uh, You'd go JJ. JJ, yeah. Well, it's close. Like I think for the number two option, it's a, a one and one A between those two from the wide receiver position. <laughs> now, to Choice's point, I didn't even think about this. I really think it's going to be your tight end after this as the official number two after thinking about it. But trying to stay in the wide receiver core, that's where I went. The, the, the challenge for Baylor Cup is staying healthy, right? Yes, but I think that may be overstated. Okay. Who are you thinking? For me, I think I'm probably going to go with – he was injured in the spring, but I think Trey Cleveland. Okay, I was going to um, ask you about him. He's one, uh, someone, the the particular guy that was getting the attention on, on social media and that I think I, I'm hearing great things about out of camp is Brady Boyd, you, the transfer originally from South Lake Carroll, transfer from uh, uh, Minnesota. He There's been a lot of buzz around him during fall camp, so I uh, wouldn't be too surprised to see Boyd have a good one. The guy that people want to talk about a lot is Jaron Bradley. You got to see him do some big mm-hmm. stuff in the in the bowl game. I think we're a year away with him in terms of really seeing him kind of break out. He's still just a red red shirt freshman. Um, saw some out of him last year, but I would go either Cleveland or Boyd for for my answer. Uh, somebody says Sir Roderick. I hope not. <laughs> I don't think I, I think you want your second receiver in this offense. Mm-hmm. If you're assuming that its numbers are going to be probably not what they were 
passing wise uh, at Western Kentucky last year, but similar. Um, then you would assume your second receiver, second leading receiver, if your assumption is Miles Price is the the leading receiver, is going to be somewhere in the seven hundred to to thousand yard. 700 to 1,000 yard range. And I don't think Sir Roderick Thompson's getting 700 to 1,000 yards receiving. Rushing? Fantastic. But uh, I hope I hope it's not Sir Roderick that's your second leading receiver. PJ says uh, Jaran Bradley is the answer. He's a redshirt freshman from Frisco. Yeah, I, I think that um, Bradley is as exciting as it gets. 6'5, big, big body. Uh, if you're looking for maybe leading touchdown guy, Bradley might be your answer. I think he's a guy that can go up and get jump balls. He is fast, too. Four-star kid out of high school. But remember, at, at receiver, so many times, Michael Crabtree's the exception. But so many times, it's going to take a couple of years for those guys to really settle in. Eric Izakama didn't have his breakout, breakout season until last year. Mm-hmm. I saw some good flashes and some kind of a, a crescendo towards last year, but he didn't have his breakout season until his junior year. So I think counting on Bradley as a freshman, he's a redshirt freshman and only gotten four games last year, but counting on him as a freshman would be a lot. That's why I kind of lean towards Trey Cleveland. He seems in that camp like he's a comma where – We've seen him catch more passes each of his years at Tech, and I think we'll see him uh, catch quite a few and, and get that opportunity this year. I, I wonder if there's one of those guys that we've just mentioned, all of those guys that has a preference in terms of the quarterback. I know they're all going to say everybody throws the ball well to me, but there's always that there's always that receiver that has that special relationship with a quarterback who says, man, so-and-so – just the way he throws the ball to me or the connection that we have because of the number of yep. catches that we had with each other. Uh, so does that? I wonder if that sometimes plays into some of these decisions too. Sure, sure. Uh, and there, there's guys that definitely are more comfortable with one quarterback or a quarterback that's more comfortable with with a particular receiver, receiver or two. Um, you know, the, the guy that – I'm changing my answer. Am I allowed to do that? Can we amend <laughs> Go for it. Sure. Loic Fungi is actually the guy I'm going to go with. Fungi's, oh, okay. Fungi's the same camp as Cleveland, a junior, mm-hmm. seen good things the first couple of seasons. But um, I listening to some of the stuff he said at, at Texas Tech Media Day, he really anticipates a uh, a much bigger role in this offense for himself than than he's had in the last couple of seasons. And he's one of those guys that's kind of branded on the mind, like Donovan Smith. Uh, he was at Midland Lee Legacy, whatever the heck they're calling it now. Um, he was there and saw him torch friendship three seasons in a row. I think he probably had close to 600 yards in the three games he played against friendships. Uh, so th- that's still imprinted on the mind quite a bit Six four, um, two ten. he went to midland lee he didn't go to midland legacy that's true it was lee when he went yeah so i just kind of want to point out between all of this and changing answers and put, throwing different options out there i'm not sure we missed a wide receiver on the list oh there's still plenty <laughs> no, no no there's there's plenty that could still be in there nehemiah martinez I was, had a I great just, spring. I was just looking at nehemiah martinez yeah, yeah he's he's in the mix for for that conversation um Okay, maybe that was it. Chad Townsend, he's he also like Xavier White's moved over uh, from running back back to where he was at Alabama, which is receiver. So, I I, I will say <laughs> choice. He has I think touched all of them. Now. No, I, that's what I was I was saying. The other ones that we yeah. hadn't touched on. Yeah. No, I think Chuck that people have talked about the receiver position is where are you going to get the production? Because Miles Price is really the only proven mm-hmm. yardage or or production wise guy that you've got back. Um, but I look at the the receiver position and you're loaded with guys that have ability. Guys that should be able to step up. So while you don't have a lot of proof in the pudding, you've got a whole lot of guys that should be able to do it, and that's why I'm I'm not nearly as concerned about uh, the receiver position is 
uh, some others. And somebody else asked a question off the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Is he healthy, uh, Loic Fungi? Yeah, he is. Okay. He is. He's, he should he's, be ready he, to go. You need him to stay healthy. Unless something's happened in camp this week that yeah. I didn't know about, he's healthy. Okay. Uh, 7.39 this morning here on the Morning Drive. So if you have a thought or a comment or a question on that, hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double com for that or the mobile app. Um, also, the Benchmark Hotline is open, too, at 806-771-0973. Big plays and even bigger laps. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Uh, Texas Rangers losers yesterday as they fall to the Astros 7-3. to And it wasn't that close. Uh, Rangers had the afternoon affair with Houston in Houston. And uh, it was all Fromber Valdez in that ball game. He goes seven innings, four hits allowed, no runs, only walked one while striking out eight. Uh, so the Rangers lose that series. Astros take it in the rubber match. Those two teams back at it tonight as they're both at home this evening. Rangers in Seattle, 630 here on Double T 97.3. Astros and the Swingin' A's. That's right. At 640. That's right. On 100.7, the score. That's right. They were already in Houston by the time the uh, Rangers uh, and the uh, Astros were playing yesterday. Okay. That's interesting. Well, it happens sometimes when you're traveling, you know? Yeah. Uh, Tom Izzo got uh, his retirement funded a little bit more. I don't, I don't know who Michigan State was competing against for him because he hadn't gone anywhere. Yeah. He's 67 years old. But boom, he gets an extra $2 million a year. He's got a five-year deal valued at $6.2 million per season. Uh, school announced the deal yesterday saying the rollover contract will be needed to will need to be approved by its Board of Regents next month. Uh, this is the statement from the university president. We greatly appreciate Coach Izzo's commitment to our outstanding university and his competitive drive to keep Spartan basketball as a national powerhouse. He is a national championship coach but that was 22 years ago one in 2000 he has uh eight final four appearances though and uh, was inducted in the basketball hall of fame in 2016 i like tom izzo but yep. man i feel like you're competing against yourself there it's like does he really need an extra two million <laughs> does anybody need anything <laughs> goodness uh, yeah uh some news came out um, my days are running together. So Today's I think, Friday. I think this is the correct one. Uh, Mac McClung was selected to the USA World Cup qualifying team okay. uh, yesterday. He will play for Team USA Basketball. Who uh, He'll be making his uh, USA Basketball debut after recently signing with the Golden State Warriors. It's a 12-man roster that they announced uh, yesterday. So congratulations to Mac. The team hosts Uruguay August 25th in Las Vegas. And then that's followed up by a match against Colombia on August 29th. What about the Uruguayans and the Colombians would be glad to head, be heading out of their countries? I'm sure they don't mind know, it too much. I know. I mean, especially going to Las Vegas. Lost wages. Lost Vegas. Yeah. All right. Deshaun Watson says this. Hey, here, here, how oh about this? I'll take eight eight games and pay you $5 million, and we'll just make this all go away. Uh, that's what the Associated Press and uh, Mike Florio are reporting. Um, he's trying to kind of save his bacon, so to speak. Is that how um, suspensions work? You get to make a counter offer, and then it gets decided? I don't think well, that's how suspensions work. Well, here's the deal. He has a he, he, the arbitrator gave him six games. The NFL wants a full season. They tried to negotiate with him, but he said no. So now he's negotiating back with them, and they're just letting the word slip out through the um, fourth estate. Just not how I think suspensions work. I think if my boss wants to suspend me for a year, I'm suspended but, for the, a year. But Roger Goodell is not his boss. True. So I mean, his if boss he, is the Cleveland owner. And, and who here's worked, the deal: if the NFL Roger Goodell works for, if the NFL suspends him for a year, he's going to go to court and he'll play week one. So the NFL's got to decide: do we take the eight and the five million? Is that punishment enough? No. Like and, if you're Goodell, 
go for go for the full season. I don't think you're going to get it, but well, then you're going to go to court. Well, that's fine. Okay. I I think if if you're the NFL, you've got to you got to push it. If you this is the one of the rare times I agree with Roger Goodell, but he's right. Predatory behavior you can't you can't allow it to continue, or you can't uh, can't be light on it. Okay. Uh, yesterday, the NBA retires number six across the entire league uh, for Bill Russell. Russell's status in the league uh, forever immortalized by the retirement of the number. But this, you like this move? No. The, you, you don't like it because of the timing? Yes, right. Okay. It's too late. Better late than never, though, right? I guess. Um, I, <clears throat> I'm plus or minus on retiring every... I, I think the Celtics retired his number. Nobody should ever wear number six again as a Celtic. Did Bill? Does Bill Russell deserve to be thought of as in the same vein as Jackie Robinson from an NBA standpoint? Absolutely. Okay. I just wish they would have done it while he was alive. It seems gratuitous. Uh, NFL action uh, last night. Uh, Patriots lose to the Giants 23-21. Ravens uh, beat the Titans 23-20, 23-10. Uh, <clears throat> the Patriots starting quarterback did not start or play, uh, nor did the Ravens starting quarterback, nor did the Tennessee Titans, Ryan Tannehill. Uh, tomorrow, among the games, the Dallas Cowboys will play the Denver Broncos, and we'll uh, join that game in progress after the Rangers and the Seattle Mariners. Okay, Chiefs and Bears will play at Soldier Field tomorrow in Ch- Ch- Chicago, Chicago with a 12 noon uh, kick. Okay. That's all I got. You That's got the boom, else? boom, boom. From Lubbock Sports Station, double T 97.3 and double T 97.3.com. Okay. Take your thoughts and comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. And certainly look forward to hearing from you. Did you uh, see? If you're doing anything special this weekend, if you're cooking anything special and you want to hit us up with that. Did you see uh, your boy? Why is it my boy? I don't know. I do that to everybody. Oh, okay. But this guy he seems like your boy because he's a, he was an NFL guy, just okay. like you. Uh, A.B., Antonio Bryant <laughs> spoke out. Ant- Antonio Brown? Yeah, I said Bryant, didn't yeah. I? Mm-hmm. Telling you, sleep deprivation's bad kids. Don't do it. Um, Antonio Brown mm-hmm. spoke out for the first time. I think this is the first time he's spoken publicly since uh, shedding his shirt during the game. I thought there was once at the Maybe there's one more, but it's been a while. It's been a while. He says, my biggest regret in my career doesn't involve calling my GM a... uh, Dingleberry? uh, I think he called him more of a racial slur. I don't know. You could probably say it because it's about a white guy. Uh, Or showing up to Raiders camp late in a hot air balloon with frozen feet Mm -hmm. or throwing rocks at that UPS driver. And it definitely doesn't involve taking my shirt off and doing a victory lap around the Jets stadium mid-game while throwing up deuces. Mm -hmm. My biggest regret is that I'll never get to see me, Antonio Brown, play a game live. Sure, I can watch the game afterwards, but I can't imagine what that was like for you all to see something like that. Like watching the Beatles or Jesus perform at Red Rocks. Well, humble brag, you know, I do this the (laughs) best. There's nothing humble. (laughs) That... Oh, man. He's a piece of work, isn't he? <clears throat> I hope someone gets to him in terms of, uh, you know, mental illness. He needs, he needs some counseling. He needs some help. He needs some help. Yeah. Um, Kyle Shanahan is mad at the National Football League. Pourquoi? <laughs> Apparently, he isn't happy with the fact that the league is allowed to limit what a coach can wear on the sideline. Uh, he likes the flat-brimmed hat. Uh, he was asked what he was going to wear this season. Uh, he goes, I have such a beef with the league right now. It's a tough issue going on. They won't let me pick out my own one. They won't let me wear anyone that's from a different year, so I can't wear an older one. Shanahan hasn't always worn a hat, but that changed in 2019 uh, with uh, and worked with New Era to design a hat. The hat was called the Scarlet Shanahan Square 
trucker snapback adjustable hat. I hate the flat brimmed look. I tease their own. You do you. No, I, I got it. I but just don't I, like how it looks. Oh, I think it's, whether you like it or not, it's absolutely stupid how much the NFL cares about their looks. I mean, it is asinine mm-hmm. how much they care about enforcing what you can wear on the field, and it's even right. dumber to enforce what coaches can wear. If it's got the team logo, the NFL logo on it, mm-hmm. what's the beef? Yeah. He's not asking to wear a rainbow-colored hat out there. No, not at all. Which they would probably be for. <clears throat> You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973com